Gingers family. My name is Brad Phillips. I'm here with Puppy Sips Training, and we're going to be doing Gingers demonstration for you. Uh, we're very excited that we can send Ginger home to you. I know it's been a long time coming, and so uh, I think you'll really enjoy her. Before we get going, I just want to talk a little bit about Ginger. Um, she's a wonderful dog, has a, a fair amount of energy, but she's very lovely. She just wants to be with you all the time, and I know she'll make a great fit into your family. Um, now, just a little bit more about her. When she's doing commands or you ask her to do something, she kind of has different things that motivate her. Sometimes it might be a tennis ball, sometimes it might be a hot dog, or sometimes it might be like a really soft toy like this raccoon. So sometimes if she's kind of reluctant to do something or just kind of refuses, you might just have to switch up the reward. And sometimes just uh, giving her praise and a little bit of affection does wonders. So just so you know that. Now before we get started, first I want to talk about a couple words that you'll hear me say quite a bit. First would be okay, and that's our release word as well as our marker. So it marks the correct behavior as well as releases them from a stay. The other thing you might hear me say is no, which is our correction word. And we treat that kind of as a misdemeanor felony type of deal. Uh, you know, if she does something uh, simple, like breaks a stay, I'll tell her no and make her do it again. Now, if she does something really bad, like whether she tries to steal something out of my hand, you kind of have to get after her a little bit more. And you really do that by um, your voice fluctuation and body language. Uh, dogs read those more than anything else. So, we're going to get started now, and we're going to go through our entire program. So, starting with socialization. So, for the first two weeks that we had Ginger, she spent time with a family here in Clarkson, where they took her around town, they took her around the farm, kind of got her used to different places, different people, animals, noises, as well as surfaces or textures, little things like that. We're just trying to socialize her with as many different circumstances or situations as we can. That's just going to build um, a dog that's not going to be aggressive or timid or anxious or any of those things. As well as we really focus on that throughout our training, just doing commands on the road as well as the hardwood or in the grass or on the concrete. And sometimes they can get hung up on those things. And so, you know, if you're doing a command and she doesn't want to lay down on the tile, try the carpet or on the bed or, or little things like that. Those things can really affect the way that a dog behaves. So next would be her manners. And we'll go through each one of those step by step. Same thing with her obedience commands. And then we'll cover her leash training and her house training. And those two definitely took up the bulk of the time just because it's a lot of repetitions, a lot of making sure that she's going to be, I guess, solid. She's going to perform for you. And I'm going to also going to talk to you step by step how to transition the bell and everything like that over to your home. But we're going to get started now with our manners. Now, first we'll start with her gates and her doorways. Anytime I let her out, I expect her to hold a stay, and I shouldn't have to tell her to stay. Now, if she does try and break, I might shut the door, I might lift up my foot just kind of reminding her that she's not allowed to go through until I tell her that she can. And so we're going to open this up and let her out. Okay, good girl. So with her gates and her doorways, I would expect her to stay at our house door as well. So I'm going to open this up. Now it's warm outside and they really don't want to go out, so don't be surprised if she doesn't really want to go out. Okay, good girl, good girl, all right, right back. Okay, well, she did it great, just expect that, but um, as she waits at the doorway till you say okay. Now, second on our manners is one, uh, anytime she approaches me, I expect her to sit, just like that. I shouldn't have to tell her, that should be what we call her breeding. It should be an automatic behavior. Anytime she approaches me, come here. I expect her to sit before I give her any attention, and that's just going to keep her from jumping as well as it will get her eye contact and she won't be uh, wrapping you up with a leash, which really leads us into jumping. Now, she's a very small dog, she's going to stay small, and so sometimes people don't mind, I guess, the jumping up on them. I really don't like it. Now, Ginger is a very jumpy dog. Now, she knows, though, that she's not supposed to put her paws on me. I'm going to tell her off if she ever does. And so sometimes she might jump up in the air, put her paws up like that. 
she likes to try and dance. Um, that's just kind of her personality. But if she ever does try and put her paws on me, I'm going to tell her off. And that's the same thing if she ever tries to jump up, whether it be on the crate or tries to, you know, jump up on the table, anything like that, tell her off and expect her to uh, sit back down. And she responds really well to that. She knows exactly what it means. Like I said, she is a very kind of a jumpy dog, so she's heard that quite a bit. Now, um, I assume that where she will be so small and you guys seem like you're just going to love her so much that I would assume you're probably just fine with her being in your lap and things like that. But if you aren't, just once again, the word is off. Now we're going to talk about our mealtime matters now. One would be when you guys eat, I would put her in a crate or put her on her bed just so she's not right there next to you. That's just going to keep her from begging. Now when she eats, I expect her to hold a sit stay. And she is also a very slow eater, so you kind of got to give her time. So you can see she's already sat down and I'm just going to tell her to stay. And this is a great time to really work on her stays. We call it the three D's, and that's distance, duration, and distraction. And so talking right now is kind of a big distraction. And all we're doing is just lengthening those stays, making them a little bit harder, just trying to really strengthen them. Other good distractions, well, stay. Stay. It's kind of moving the food bowl, things like that. Okay, good girl. And she might not be very hungry. Like I said, it is kind of warm here, but we'll see if she wants to eat. Now, other things that we do with her food is we spend time putting our hands in their food bowl. Just kind of getting down in around her muzzle, and which she's kind of used to that. All we're doing there is protecting against any type of aggression. I don't want her to be aggressive over her food towards me or towards anyone. And aggression is kind of a big part of her manners. Now, whether it's when she's eating or not, we spend a lot of time touching her paws, um, her ears, her muzzle, her tail, just those real sensitive areas on her dog, just making sure that she doesn't have any type of aggression towards us. And she is really just extremely gentle. I've never seen her be aggressive towards anyone. And the same thing with her mouth, she never gets really crazy or tries to, tries to bite anything or anyone. So, you don't really have to worry too much about aggression, and especially where she's a smaller dog. One thing you will notice is she does get a little excited over toys, and she might try and grab it out of your hand, um, which we really don't want. But if you do have kids trying to play with her, I would recommend they play with a toy just so she does have something to grab onto. That way she's not going to be trying to grab onto like their pant legs or um, an arm or anything like that. Just protecting against those types of things that can be even mistaken as aggression. Um, next on our list would be her chewing. Now, for the first year of a dog's life, on and off they're going to be teething. And so they just have the need to chew. And so we train on a base of avoiding and replacing. So if you can avoid giving her free access to like shoes or toys or things like that, that's the best uh, way to combat chewing. But of course that's not really possible in your home. You're always going to have a couch, you're going to have a table leg, a bed, something that she has access to chew on. And so for the first little while you're going to have to establish you know, what's yours and what's hers, what she's allowed to chew on and what she's not. And so that's where replacing comes in. If you see her go up to like a table leg and she starts to try and gnaw on it, you know, tell her no. Give her a leash correction, which is just kind of two pops on the leash. It doesn't have to be very hard, just letting her know that it's not okay. And then replace it with something of equal texture. So if she's chewing on something hard, I'll give her a bully stick, which is just like this. It's just something she can really um, go at. Or if she starts chewing on her bed, or something soft, I'll give her a plush toy or something like that that she can really get her teeth into. Now, to protect against chewing, one is just boredom. When a dog's bored, they're going to chew. And so if you have a downtime where she's just going to be laying around, I would just give her something to chew on. That's just going to protect against a lot of different things. Uh, 
So yeah. Next on our list would, uh, would be her mouth. So I expect her to be very gentle, and what she really is. Even though she is so gentle, we have taught her the word gently. So anytime she takes food out of my hand, and if she's real excited, I'll pull my hand back and say gently, and then I just expect her to take it with her tongue and her lips. Now like I said, she has no problem being gentle. Even, most of the time you have to be really aware of the way you give a dog a treat. You don't want to give it to between your thumb and your forefinger just because that's kind of asking them to bite you. Um, you usually get it in the palm of your hand. But with her, she's just so gentle, you don't really have a problem there. And lastly, on our manners, would be her drop it. Now, I just expect her to drop it out of courtesy. And we have instilled that word. And she loves toys, so she is pretty good at this command. So when she gets it, you ought to just be able to tell her to drop it and just expect her to release it. Now with something soft like this, sometimes they get their teeth caught in it, so you have to be careful and that's why I want her to physically release the object because her teeth can get caught in there and then you can end up hurting her if you try and yank it out. Now if she finds something that she really doesn't want to give up and she won't drop it for the command, you're just going to want to take it by both ends if you can and you just want to make it really unappealing so she can't move it, she can't play with it it just kind of turns them off and they'll just eventually drop it and if that doesn't really work then you can start to push your fingers in oh, drop. and that, what that's doing is pushing her lips against her canines just making it very uncomfortable so now um, we'll move into her commands Alright, for her commands, we have nine big ones that we really focus on. One, we've already covered a little bit, and that's drop it. The other eight are watch me, come, sit, down, sit, stay, down, stay, crate, and go to bed. And we're going to cover each one of those individually and talk about them. Now we're going to start with the two most basic. And the first one of those is watch me. So we teach that from day one. And all that is, is get, it's getting her eye contact. Because dogs have a single track mind. Whatever they're looking at, that's what they're thinking about. And so if you have their eye contact, you have 100% attention. And so when I say all I'm looking for are her eyes to come up. Now the hard part is to get her to take her eyes off of me where I have this toy. Watch me. Okay, good girl, good girl. I'm just wanting her to look at me. Now if I can look. Here to look down. Oh, missed it. Watch me. Okay, good girl. See that? Just her head coming up. That's all I want. And that can be, you know, whether it's a life saving command if she's running into traffic, you just need her to stop. Or it can be, you know, if you're just in the kitchen cooking and you drop something on the floor you don't want her to get, tell her to watch me and to look up. So, next of our most elementary commands would be come. Um, and where she heard me. I was hoping she'd kind of stay back. She started to hinge. But uh, all I do is want her to come to, to come to me. Ginger, come. Good girl. Good girl. Now, she's a little slow at it where we're this close, but when you get some distance, expect her to speed that up. Now, come is the one... Here, let me do that. Come is the one command that everybody kills right off. And that's just because when you call your dog to come. It's usually when they're doing something they're not supposed to, or it's time to leave the park, little things like that. And so they can quickly build a negative association with the word. And so you're gonna wanna really practice that one. And we have a rule of 10 to one, and that's I'll call my dog to come 10 times for no reason at all other than just to give her some type of reward for every one time that I have to call her to come. Otherwise, if you don't have to call her to come, just click a leash on and go, and it's just going to preserve the integrity of that command. Come here. So our next three commands have hand signals, and that's our sit, which is a scoop over the nose, our down, which I'll just take my hand flat and go to the ground, and then stay is just a stop sign. And I'll show you each one of those. So first sit. Is just over the nose. Good girl. Good girl. Down. No. 
I'll always want her to be in a sit first, just so she's already halfway there. Down. Good girl. Stay. No. Down. Now you're not going to want to do it. She says, I'm not rewarding her enough. She didn't want food today, so we'll give her the toy for a second and do it. Good girl. Now she always wants to take her toy back to somewhere soft so she can lay down and play on it. Which just happens to be our rug, which is right underneath Amy. Draw. Good girl. Good girl. Come here. Sit. Down. And oh, gee, there you go. Stay. Okay, good girl. Now she has a good puppy say, but never be satisfied with it. Always seek to really build that up. And you do that by doing the three D's, which I mentioned earlier. Building distance, duration, and distraction. And a great way to build her stay is to do it on her bed, because she loves her bed, which I'll show you in a minute. I had to pick it up because she won't leave it alone. Um, but if she, you have a downtime, whether it's reading a book or watching a, a TV show, you can put her on her bed, put her in a down stay, and then start to build that up. Right now she's 20, 30 seconds, which is great for a puppy, and then build it up to a minute, to two minutes, to five minutes. And if you really work at it, it's very possible to get this puppy up to an hour. Now, um, also, we have a sit stay, which I'll show you that now. We'll bring it over here so you can see. Sit. Sit. Stay. Okay, good girl. Now if she breaks like that, I'm going to tell her no, take her back to the same spot, and then do it again, but I'll just keep it a little bit shorter. Uh, just making sure that we're ending with the correct behavior. And that's the most important thing with any of the commands, is that you end with the correct behavior. So that's fine if you need to shorten it and then just build it back up to where it was and, and further on. So the last two of our commands, grab a toy, um, is create and go to bed. Now they don't necessarily have hand signals, but I'll just put myself in a position where she can read me. And now with Crate, she really likes to take her time doing it. Crate. Good girl. Good girl. Now I also expect her to stay at that point. Okay, good girl. Good girl. And that's fine if she takes a minute, but if she refuses to go in, then I will maybe adjust my position, use a different tone of voice, make it kind of exciting, maybe change the reward, but yeah, just keeping it positive, and then just adjusting something, because sometimes she might even just have a little bit of a brain lock. So lastly would be our go bed, and that's kind of the same thing. I'm going to move myself in a position, and then I'll point. Come here. Bed's back. Come here. She just loves her bed. That's just her favorite place. Come here. So that command is definitely not hard because she'll just go there anyway. Come on. Come here. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Go to bed. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Now, when I tell her to go to her bed, I expect her to stay until I release her. Which, once again, is not hard for her. Okay, good girl, good girl. Now, if you have any questions with the commands, please give me a call. The important thing is practice them, practice them, practice them. Every day you should go through these commands, always striving to improve them. One of the biggest ones you should practice is crate. 
make sure that you're practicing practicing that command quite a bit and not just using it to lock her up otherwise she'll just build up this negative association with the crate to a source of like abandonment she thinks you're abandoning her when you put her in there uh, so just practice all of them lots and lots all right well we're going to talk about her house training now now with this she has learned to ring the bell she has learned where the bell is and she's also learned where outside is kind of her area and so she's going to have to relearn where they are at your house and so that's kind of the most involved for you for the first couple days you're going to have to be really on top of it now i'm going to give you some step-by-step -step instructions that make it the easiest uh, possible basically so one um, is right when you get her home she's going to be either a long car ride or a long plane ride and so you're immediately going to take her to an area where you have designated for her to eliminate now when she goes make it very very rewarding and mark it when i say that what i mean is our marker word is outside for this so when she goes to the bathroom i'd say good girl get outside get outside good girl and just make it really really positive you know give her lots of love and some sort of reward and then take her inside now when you take her in you're going to want to take this bell that we're going to send you and you'll hang it on the door that you want her to go out of and you want to use the same door every time now when you hang it i would suggest putting some peanut butter or some bacon grease or something that smells really really good on it and you're going to hang it on that door and basically immediately she's going to go she's going to touch the bell or lick it just because she's trying to get whatever's on it off and as soon as she touches it you're going to use the word outside again you're going to mark the behavior you're going to say you want to go outside let's go outside and you'll take her by a leash you'll go out to that designated spot pace around for a minute or two if she goes great if she doesn't that's fine because we know that she was just licking the bell for whatever was on it and you'll bring her right back in and immediately she's going to turn around and she's going to touch the bell again so you're going to say the same thing you want to go outside let's go outside and then you'll take her out pace around for a minute or two and then come back in I do this about 10 times with the peanut butter or whatever's on the bell. Now, in that repetition of 10, hopefully she's either squatted or she's went, just trying to figure out what's going on, giving you the opportunity to really make it rewarding. You know, telling her good outside, giving her lots of love and affection and treats or you know, whatever she's really thriving on that day. And then you'll bring her right back in. Now, after that 10 times, I'll take the bell and I'll clean it off, make sure that there's nothing left on the bell or on the door, and just no remnants anywhere. And generally, they'll immediately go and touch that bell again because they're looking for it. And you're going to do the same thing. You'll take her out, pace her around, come back in. They'll usually do this, you know, four or five times before realizing that there's nothing there on the bell. And so you can really have 15 repetitions, which are really important that you mark them and kind of do them correctly correctly so as soon as she touches the bell you say you want to go outside let's go outside when you get to the spot i'll even pace around and say outside just trying to prompt her to go and when she goes i'll say you're good outside good girl make it really rewarding and come right back in the important part is that if she doesn't go or even when she does when you take her out she does not get a play it's going out doing her business coming right back in if you let her play, then she'll want to just ring the bell every two minutes because she wants to go and play. And so she has to realize when she rings the bell that it's just to go to the bathroom and right back in. Now, for the first couple days, you're going to want to put her on a timer. So after you do those repetitions with the bell, I would then set a 30-minute timer. And when that timer goes off, I would take her over to the door, uh, show her the bell, and might hold it out in front of her or bounce it off the door just giving her an opportunity to ring it and then when she does reward her say get outside or tell her let's go outside uh, then go out see if she needs to use the bathroom come back in for the first couple days she'll want to just keep well for the first couple hours i keep that timer at 30 minutes after you know a few hours you can build it up to 45 minutes to an hour to two hours right now she's definitely good in the house for two hours without needing a break 
but you really want to stay on top of that just because these first couple days that she's in a new environment are really important because she's either going to establish going outside to use the bathroom or she's going to try and find a corner and use the bathroom. And so it's really critical that you teach her the bell right off where it is in your home and that it means the same thing as it does here, that she has to go to the bathroom. And that's the best way to transition that over. If you have any issues with that, please call me. We'll take care of it right away. Uh, that is the, one of the, well, that is the most important part of our program. And so we want to help you. And if you follow these instructions, you will have success. I can promise you that. Now, along with her house training has also been her crate training. Now, she is good in the crate for 8 to 10 hours at night without needing a break. She's also good during the day for 3 to 4 hours without needing a break. Now, for the first night that she's home with you, sometimes the transition can be really stressful and they might get a loose stool, things like that. So if she winds in the middle of the night, take her out, use the bathroom, and then bring her right back in. Don't let her play or anything like that. It's just go to the bathroom and back in. Now, if you do that, she doesn't go, or she does go, and she just continues to whine, or even, you know, a couple days she wants to whine, sometimes you might just need to cover the crate. They have a denning instinct where they just like to be dark and tight, and so that would be the only time that I would expect her to cry in her crate. Unless, of course, she can see you, sometimes then she might want to get out. But I would expect her to sleep through the night in the crate. We tried to make it very, very comfortable. She does like having something soft in there. She likes it. She's definitely a house dog. She loves to lounge around and be on something soft, and she loves to be right next to you. So, yeah. Next, we'll talk about her leash training. Now, after the leash training, then I'll show you that she'll ring the bell. We'll go outside, then we'll come in for a minute and then we'll go back out and actually show you the leash training on the road. But just to talk about it for a second. Now, we've taught her two different types of walks. One would be an off-leash or a long-leash walk. And that's just for her to be a dog. She needs to run, she needs to sniff and play and just relax. And she definitely needs one of those walks once a week. Now, when she first gets let out, she loves to just run. She just goes and goes and goes. And so that's definitely a good time to play with her, and especially if you're going to you know, bring her inside and expect her to settle down. Now the second walk we teach them is our attention walk, and that's basically my business walk. We're getting from point A to point B. I expect her to continually uh, keep her attention on me, check in, and I want her by my side. Now that those walks have two commands. The first would be let's go, just signifying we're moving and the next would be easy. So if she ever wants to pull, I'll tell her easy, and I'll give her a leash correction, which is just kind of two pops on the leash. And we'll demonstrate those. The other important thing with the leash is for the next month or so, I would keep a short leash on her when she's out, or when she's inside. That's just giving you an opportunity to correct her if she doesn't need to go to the bathroom or anything like that. So we'll come over here and we'll show you the bell. We'll see if we can get her off her bed. Let's go. Come on. So if you know, she was on a 30 minute timer or anything like that, I would bring her over to the bell. Okay, good girl. She doesn't want to reward you there. We'll take her outside. Okay. Now we'll wait just a second and then we'll go back out and show you her leash training. All we're doing there is distinguishing between the bell and going to the bathroom and going outside to do something else. Come on. No. Okay. 
Okay. sees our other dogs in there, other trainers out there, she just wants to go, but never let her, as you can see, pull. When I stopped, when she was actually really pulling, I said easy, and the way she turned and looked at me, that's what I want with that command. Come here. So, if you have any questions or concerns, please give me a call, and we're excited to send Ginger to you, and thanks.